Hi right, folks, hope you're doing well today. It's now just gone 10 past 7 p.m. on the 16th for the 16th for the 5th. 2020 okay now this this video is just something that just come to mind that i was just watching an interview with uh, dwayne johnson and he was talking about make a wish and why that's important to him and that brought something to mind the reason why it is so incredibly important for the church to get right so we can bring in the harvest, so we can shine the light that God has given us to shine. So we can learn to function as we should be functioning as Christians. It's because there are a lot of lovely people out there who are unsaved. If they're unsafe when they die, like there's a lot of people dying now. An awful lot of people dying now. Well, the, I think it's about 300,000 people died of this Rona so far. That's not the end of it. It's going to get far worse, I do believe, than that. Um, but there are some lovely people, and if they die unsaved, they're going to hell, even though they've been lovely people. You know, full of love, potentially they go to hell. And that is down to us. That is our fault. That is something that is unacceptable in every way, shape or form. It's just wrong. So, realize that you need to start taking seriously the fact that you are here to do a job. You've been left here simply to be vessels for God that God can use. Same as I have as well. We've all been left here for that reason. Now in the end, we are supposed to be cleaned out so that God can use us. Well, we're not. Church has failed this world incredibly. Now, this is generally speaking, of course, you'll find the odd example where a church has done a good job. There might be little pockets of churches here, there and everywhere in different locations in the world where, you know, one or two churches might be doing a brilliant job. But generally speaking, they've done an awful job. That's the reality of the situation. You know, you can't for in any way, shape or form describe them as doing a great job because they've not done a great job. But we need to back up our ideas because there are some lovely people. We're getting older, right? Recently, Brian Danahay, lovely actor. An actor who was a very talented, very lovely actor. Seemed to be a very generous, lovely man. Past 81 years of age. Now, I imagine... If he's not saved, he will be in hell. And the reason why, not because he was a bad person, but because he would have had opportunities to give his life to God. At 81 years of age, he would have had opportunities during that time. Yeah, not necessarily completely obvious opportunities, but there would have been opportunities around that time. Now, there are other people who are of whatever age they are who may die in the next year who have not really had an opportunity 
to learn. Not really. I mean, you can say it in two points of view. You say it from the point of view of if God wanted to be a tough judge, then he could just say to people, look, you've driven past churches. You've known Christians. I put that Christian in your life. Yeah, that person wasn't perfect, but that person was a Christian. You had a chance to come to me through either one of those ways. Well, there is a defense to that. And the defense to that is quite simple. Yeah, you put a useless Christian in my life. Someone who wasn't really bothered about a relationship with you. Someone who was worldly. What am I supposed to get from that? Or you put someone who want, did want a relationship with you, but was struggling constant, constantly and was finding life difficult. So again, what am I supposed to learn about loving God through that? And yes, I drove past the church. Yeah. The church was closed. Most of the times I drove past that church, it was closed. Now, wouldn't a loving God want his church to be open all the time? Again, who wins the argument? The person who's dead wins the argument. We need to represent God because that's what we're here to do. We are children of God. We have inherited when we were saved, we inherited everything that the Lord had. All that authority, all that power, all that understanding and knowledge we inherited. We don't use it. No. But it's there. We've got it. All the gifts. We've got that. We've got all those. You know, all the weapons, all the armor of God. We've got all that. It's all available to us. The fact we don't use it doesn't mean we don't have it. We do have it. We just locked it away somewhere. You know, because we don't want to be picked on. We don't want people to notice us because when they notice us, they notice we're not perfect. The thing that is, folks, is that you're not going to be serving God if you're not, if you don't want to be noticed. It really is as simple as that. If you don't want to be noticed, you're not going to be serving God. Because the reality is, the world is a very dark, hopeless place where people are struggling hugely. And if you're shining light in that darkness, you will be noticed. Hopefully, it is a case that at some point in time, God will regenerate the church and God will get rid of those that are blocking it, that are getting in the way. And the church can thrive. Now, when the church thrives, there'll be a ton of light shined. The problem is, at some point, somebody has to stand up and be one of those first lights that are shining in darkness. And yeah, that person's going to be noticed. That person's most likely going to be attacked as a result. Now, okay, attack doesn't mean physically attacked. You won't be thrown to the lions or the bears or anything like that, or in a gladiatorial duel. Yeah, it'd probably be Twitter or you know, Facebook or you know one of those mediums, or it could be the local news that will attack you, or even the national news that will attack you. You're going to go and come under attack because people that are in darkness and have been in darkness for a long time, light is painful. I can't express this enough. If you're in darkness, light is going to be painful because you're not used to it. It's going to be painful for the eyes. So generally speaking, if someone's been in darkness for a long time and suddenly all the light is let in, that person will back away from it because that's what you do. 
Now, that is a physical thing that is proved in reality that if a person has been kept in a darkened area for a prolonged amount of time, when light is brought in, they back away from it because it's painful to them. This light we're talking about is the spiritual light which shines in the darkness, showing up the things that are sinful, that are dark, that are twisted, that are evil. And of course, people are going to definitely back away from that because most people have this air of them being perfect. You know, they want to be shown as spotless, especially on these mediums where they're continually picking on people for things that they've said or done. They don't want their own sins to be highlighted. So they're going to back away from it and they're going to attack anyone who comes near them trying to shine that light. In the end, even if it's the case that we're going to get attacked physically, that we're going to get attacked and thrown into a arena with lions or bears or gladiators, when you were saved, you really then belonged in heaven, not earth. You were left here to do a job. Simple. Again, I can't really emphasize or you know, say this enough. You were, uh, there was a word that I was trying to think of, emphasize, probably. I said emphasis. But say this enough, yeah, that's fine. I couldn't say this enough because it is simply a case that we were left here to do a job. And the fact of the matter is, we think we were left here because heaven isn't ready. You look at most churches. What do most churches believe we were left here for? I've been in churches. I've heard them speak about the fact that the Lord said, I'm going away to make a place for you. So obviously we've been left here because that place isn't ready. No, we've been left here to do a job. To be used by God as vessels for him to bless others and bring others to him. That is the purpose. And the problem is the whole world, everything, Christian living, looks really difficult because of the fact we're not doing that, because we don't understand why we've been left here. We don't understand the purpose of, okay, you know, shining my light with the possibility of getting attacked. No, thank you. But if you've been left here to do a job, and that's part of your job, then your attitude towards that suddenly changes. This video will be entitled, We Have a Job to Do. And part of that job is to you know, allow God to cleanse us so that he can use us. And so that he can shine his light through us. I mean, the consequences of that is up to God to deal with if he wants to. If he wants to take us to heaven right now, you have two minutes of shining your light, then somebody kills us, we go to heaven. Great. Yeah, we go, we go to heaven. We don't have to put up this world anymore. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah, it's a dark world here. It's bad, and it's going to get worse. Look at the... When the Bible talks about the last days and what happens in the last days, look at the book of Revelations, what it talks about. That's bad. That's not something you should necessarily want to be in for the sake of you just being alive. No. I mean, you want to be in it because if you're in that time, maybe you can help others still to come to God during that time. You can shine some light in the utter darkness. As it's going to be. We've got darkness right now, but compared to the darkness of the last days, what we've got is pretty bright. So being spared that, not a bad thing necessarily. Not a bad thing. You go to heaven, you have you know, your eternity in heaven starts. 
Christy. So in the end, folks, we have a job to do. We need to realize that we have a job to do. As I said in the video this morning, you know, there's a lot that the church hasn't taught us. This is one of those things. Yeah, I spoke about a few, spoken about, spoke. Jeez. I'm using bad English here. And for an Englishman, that is quite unacceptable. <laughs> Although for a human, this is quite understandable. Yeah, I, I've spoken about a few things recently that um, the church hasn't spoken about. And this is one of those things. And the church needs to start speaking about that. Why we're here. Yeah, why everyone else is here, they're not saved. They need to be saved. You know, they're still here because they're not saved. Why are we still here? We're saved. We belong in heaven, so why are we still here? Yeah. If it's because the Lord went to make a place for us and it's not ready, you've got to say that's a bit incompetent. You know, 2,000 years? How long are we supposed to believe it took God to create the earth? I mean, some Christians believe it's, what, seven days, 7,000 years maybe? That's to create the whole earth and the heavens and everything. So 2,000 years to create a place for me in heaven? I don't want anything that fancy. <laughs> yeah. Something fairly simple would be fine. I, I'm, not, I'm not that bothered. I've been used to living in places with no heating or no hot water. So, you know, something that's got heating and hot water would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's better than what I've, I've had. So it's an improvement. Yeah, I'm not expecting too much. Yeah, so... No, we're not left here for that reason. Not at all. We're left here because we have a job to do. And in the end, we, we've got to... That's why I've been trying to say to people, you know, focus on the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you because you're not going to be in a position where God can cleanse you out and use you if you're not being guided by God. You've got to be guided by God for that to happen. And yeah, the church has not been teaching people to be guided by God. Teaching people to just sit there on a weekend and you know they're gonna go through the gospel of this or the gospel of that or the words of this or the words of that, the lessons of Paul or the lessons of Philip. You know, it's like, okay. I've got a Bible, I can read it myself. Whether I read it myself is a different matter, but I can read it myself. So I don't need you up there doing that. I need to hear what does God want to say to us now about us, about the situation that we are in now. Not just Rona. Of course, churches aren't meeting, so I'm not exactly talking about Rona. But there's so many things that are happening within society. What, is God, what does God want to say to us about any of that? The person who leads the church has got to be the person who says, God is saying we need to go left. So we are going left. Anyone who doesn't want to go left, good luck to you. We're not going to wait. God said go left now, so we're going left now. Bye bye, the rest of you. We've not had that. We've had, you know, people. As I've said time and time again, we've had people that were. But God said we're going to go left, but you know, these people want to go right or just want to stay here for a bit longer. So we're going to do that, okay? Until these people are ready. Yet yeah, those people will never get ready. They're not being led by God. They're being led by their emotions. So they will never be ready. They're being led by, oh, poor me. Oh, life is awful. Poor me. Yeah, they're never going to get right with God like that. Yeah, they've got to be put in a position where they're going to make a decision. God's way or yours. Do you want to sit in misery or do you want to try, at least try and go with God? Yeah. 
as I said in the one earlier, the pastoral ministry still has a massive job to do, but leading the church isn't one of those jobs. It's not their job and not their responsibility. They've led us to this point where most Christians have no understanding what they're here for. Yeah. They were saved, but they're just here until they die. And just waiting to go to heaven, basically. That's not what we're here for. We have a job to do. There you go. That's this one done. We do have a job to do, folks. So be there to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And I wish you well. God bless. And I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.